Welcome to Exposure Therapy and Happy New Year. I appreciate all of your support and watching these podcasts for the last year, uh, the first year inaugural year of the Exposure Therapy Photography Podcast. And I'm looking forward to uh, getting into an exciting year 2024. But before we do that, I wanted to finish off this year by giving you a review of my favorite photos of 2023 that I took uh, traveling all over the province of Alberta. So if you want to learn how to instantly improve your photos using some of the techniques I used, stay tuned. Coming to Alberta from Ontario, from Toronto no less, being a bit of a city boy, uh, everything out here was so new to me. And uh, one of the things that was new to me was a uh, was going to the rodeos and seeing the stampedes uh, all across the province. My first rodeo that I attended was uh, in the summer of 2022, was the Pinoka Stampede, which was absolutely amazing. And I, it was that time that I absolutely fell in love with rodeo. And uh, I got a chance to go to the High Prairie Rodeo as well. One of the coolest rodeos I've been to is in my now hometown of Valley View, Alberta. It's called the Crocus Hill Stampede. And it's just a tiny little small town rodeo that is absolutely incredible. And so I had the opportunity to go and do some photography and cinematography there. And I caught some epic shots. And I got to open with a couple of my favorite shots from that rodeo um, because it kind of encapsulates, they encapsulate uh, things that I love about Alberta. So first up, we have the photo I'm leading with which is the main photo on my website and one of my favorite photos I've taken this entire year from the Crocus Hill Stampede. This photo here shows uh, one of the bareback bronc riders, um, you know, going for a flight. <laughs> uh, this shot I remember having my, like, because I was flipping between photo and video, I had just switched over to photo. Uh, it was super, super bright outside that day, so I had to jack up my shutter speed to compensate. Uh, because my ISO was already at 100, so I couldn't really go any lower there. Uh, I did want to keep a, a shallow depth of field. So my aperture, I think, was at maybe 2 or 2.8 here. And um, and yeah, so I had my shutter speed way up at, I think, 2,500, 125th, 1,2500th of a second and uh, to capture this. And I, I remember doing a quick burst of five or six photos uh, during this you know, one or two seconds of time. And uh, that was the benefit, that is the benefit rather of shooting with a digital camera with a high uh, shutter speed and a high frame rate is that you can uh, shoot in high action scenarios, um, a burst of photos, and uh, you can kind of go through and pick the one that shows the height of the action. And that was this one here, where you have the most separation between the rider and the horse itself. So this was just an epic shot, and uh, it's one of my favorite shots, and that is exactly why I have this as my main image when you go to my website. So uh, yeah, from the Crocus Hill Stampede, just super happy with uh, with the result of this shot. Also at the same Stampede, I have this one. Now the difference between this shot and this shot is you'll notice here, uh, there is no saddle. So they call this bareback bronc riding and uh, for the Bronco. And this one here is saddle bronc. So you can see the cowboy here, the rider is in the saddle. The horse is, uh, is just jumping up in the air, trying to buck him off. He's got his hand flying back in the air. You see that cowboy hat. It's just intense focus, intense motion capture in the shot. And one of the things I love about this shot too, is if you look in the background, you can see super far, just this, this beautiful horizon of nothingness. And uh, that is actually uh, the view that I fell in love with in Valley View here that made me choose to move my family here. Coming from the big city of Toronto, where everywhere you look, there's buildings and smog and lights and traffic. Just came out here and to see nothing but forest as far as the eyes can see, uh, just made me fall in love with this place. And I just thought this was a great, a great shot that showed Valley View uh, in the environment, but also showed the... Uh, the really cool action that you can that you can see at one of the small town rodeos, and there just really is nothing like a small town rodeo. So just about a ten minute drive uh, northwest of Valley View is uh, Sturgeon Lake Cree Nation. Uh, it is a, a Cree uh, Indigenous reserve, and every year they have their their powwow, their annual Cree Nation powwow. Uh, a lot of times it's actually held on the same weekend as the Crocus Hill Stampede, so it makes it really difficult to cover both events. 
Uh, this year was actually held on a different uh, different weekend, so it was easy for me to be at the powwow and be at the stampede, which is really cool for me because I love going and capturing uh, both of these cultural events. And uh, I love capturing cultural events. That's kind of the whole MO behind my photography business, capturing Western culture. And Indigenous culture is a part of Western culture, and so I'm just really happy that I get to go and, and capture uh, the the indigenous people and all the regalia and and kind of going through the traditional dances and drumming and it's just it's it's quite a sight to behold so uh, i picked two images from the uh, 2023 cree nation surgeon lake cree nation powwow and um here they are here here's the first one which um is absolutely i this is my favorite shot from the whole powwow now, if you look really closely around this gentleman's head, you can see the kind of beaded work um, all along his shoulder as well. Uh, all that beaded work is done by hand. And of course, the feathers and everything like that. So these are actually made by hand. And this is just uh, amazing detail that they put in their regalia and their traditional garb. And uh, this is just in the middle of one of the big um, round dances. So they kind of all dance around in a circle in this kind of uh, pavilion that you can see in the background there. And I just love, I love backlit shots. And so I really loved how his feathers, his headdress, everything is kind of splayed out. Um, you have a clear side profile shot where you can see the detail of the beaded work, especially if you're, if you zoom in on the, on the full image. And uh, you have that beautiful backlit coming in, casting that glow on him. And I just really loved capturing this shot just in just, in just kind of all that motion. So, it's a very visceral shot for me. Of course, I was there and I was able to hear the drums and see the dancing and everything. So, um, you know, I, that brings back that memory and the nostalgia for me of being there. But, uh, you know, I tried to capture that that feeling and I tried to capture that uh, just the spirit of the, the event in this image. And this, I say, is my favorite standalone image from that entire event. Uh, I could almost be happy with just this image. And if it wasn't for the fact that I got a couple others that I really liked, uh, not the least of which is this one here. Uh, I'm really happy with the composition of this shot. Uh, the gentleman's face is down to the lower right. It's kind of like a rule of thirds. There's enough room for most of his uh, the headdress to be uh, included in the photo. Uh, it's just kind of the edges on the on the right and the left are out of frame, but most of it is in the frame. And uh, what I really like about this is uh, he was looking right at me. And uh, I, I can't tell if it's a look of pride, <laughs> a look of disdain, or maybe a mixture of both uh, as I had my camera uh, pointed at this guy. And of course, uh, if you guys know much about Canon uh, mirrorless cameras and the RF lenses, you know that the lenses are ridiculously huge and heavy. And so I had... Don't remember if this was shot on my 28 to 70 or my 70 to 200, but it was a big honking lens I had on and uh, was pointed right at him. So, I mean, I kind of stood out like a sore thumb and uh, he was looking right at me and I got this beautiful, beautiful portrait of this man uh, in his in his regalia. And of course, that that work, you see that beaded work on his headband and that was all done by, done by hand as well. So that's, that's just, just really cool. Uh, that I was that I'm not that I was able, but that I am able to go back recurring year after year. Uh, and this was actually this was actually my second year at the powwow. Uh, I went the year before in 2022 as well, and that was my first powwow. And so I was able to return this year, and I was just really excited and and honored to be able uh, to be able to do that. So uh, as many of you know, I worked on a political campaign in the summer of 2022 and traveled about 70,000 kilometers and a pickup truck all over the province, east, west, north, south. I saw basically every corner of Alberta. And uh, out of the entire place, I fell in love with Valley View. So the uh, that campaign, the political campaign, ended on October 6th of 2022 when Danielle Smith won the premiership. Uh, and it was exactly, see, nine days after that, on a, no, excuse me, 10 days after that, on October 16th, when I uh, moved my family from Edmonton up to Valley View. Uh, permanently. So we absolutely love it here. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful place. And as I just mentioned, I was up at that powwow at Sturgeon Lake Cree Nation, which is the reserve, just maybe a, it's a literally, we share a border with it. So it's maybe 10, well, it's not really official border, but it's about a 10 minute drive to get onto that reserve. And, um, you know, so call it like 
five miles, maybe five miles away. And um, in May of this year, uh, as many of you know, um, Alberta started to have these massive wildfires and that actually went all over North America and all over the world. Like 2023 was kind of the summer of wildfire. And um, Sturgeon Lake had its own uh, wildfire, two wildfires actually that kind of combined into one. And uh, it was like, we could look out your back your back window and see the smoke rise. And uh, it was quite a sight to behold. It was our first experience, uh, my family's first experience with wildfire. And uh, it was just something to behold. So uh, as I showed you before in that, uh, in that rodeo picture here, you see in the back that there's absolutely like no buildings or obstructions in the way back there. And you can see, you know, nothing but horizon uh, for days. And uh, when the forest started to burn up, those plumes of smoke and when, you know, houses or structures would would ignite, you know, the, the black smoke would kind of go up into the air. And uh, it was just absolutely massive, massive fire uh, around Sturgeon Lake. And as I said, there was actually another fire that started a little bit more north and they kind of burned and combined into one massive fire that called the Sturgeon Lake Complex. And um, I, I, I was really fortunate fortunate to say uh, that there was no lives lost, by the way, in that one. So we we are fortunate, but there was 40 some odd uh, homes and buildings and stuff that were lost. And uh, there was a little bit of arson, but uh, the, the cause of this fire was not, it was human error, in fact, but it was not caused intentionally. But uh, yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was an interesting time to be here. It was a bit scary. As I mentioned, it was my family's first time dealing with this. And um a valley view is kind of in a little protected little pocket where you have forest all around you. But as you get to Valley View, it's uh, they call it Portal to the Peace. It's where Highway 43, which goes north to uh, sorry, which goes west to Grand Prairie, and uh, Highway 49 goes north to Peace River. Um, it, uh, it it intersects there, so we are kind of like a, a Y shape where Highway 43 comes up and goes west, and the 49 shoots off of it to go north. And we're in a bit of a clearing, so we have a bit of a Kind of natural fire garden that were just a big clearing but the smoke was absolutely incredible and immense and and all of you guys know about wildfire smoke it carries so many toxins in it so just to be here and to breathe that in wasn't that great so i mean i went through several years of refusing to wear a mask for the uh you know for the uh for the flu scare that we had and um but this was the kind of time when i did go outside that i did choose to wear a mask um an actual respirator uh, because of the wildfire smoke. And so when I was out taking photos, which I'm about to show you, I was wearing that respirator just for the sake of the wildfire smoke. And was it actually effective? I don't know, but I'm sure it was a lot better than just breathing it straight in, um, <laughs> straight into my lungs without any filter. So uh, here we go. So this photo, uh, there was actually a, a video of a screenshot from a video at the same time I took this photo that was uh, shared on Reuters business uh, when it came talking about the wildfires. So they, Reuters actually called to ask me if they could use some of my images and they, rather than use my beautiful photo here, they took a screenshot from a video of the same scene that I took. So it is what it is. But um, this is just uh, literally walking out my front door uh, down the street. When I say down the street, I mean literally 15 to 20 steps. We live across the street from, um, from a, a community center. And uh, this is, I just walked over to the community center and, uh, you know, over to the parking lot. And again, because of the horizon, you can just see for days here. And again, that's that smoke you see rising up there. That's probably about five miles away. And uh, for size comparison, for scale here, um, you can see the RVs all at the bottom there. And that's actually uh, a little RV park just at the base of my road. So, I mean... That's a, you know, those are all like a bunch of big RVs and even further behind a 10 minute drive, you can see all that smoke rise up and fill the sky. The entire sky was filled with smoke and you can actually see in the upper right of this photo, there's just a tiny little clearing, which is not really much of a clearing at all because there's most smoke in behind that. But um, yeah, it was just a, just a sight to behold the mass amounts of smoke and the different colors and textures there. Uh, it was just super crazy. So it's just really um, fortunate, if you can use that term, to be able to capture this shot and to capture just a you know what I think is a piece of history, which was Alberta's worst uh, 
you know, Alberta's worst wildfire season in history. And uh, it's just absolutely, absolutely crazy when I think that these fires r- raged and uh, while there were structures that were burnt and homes that were lost, there actually were no uh, lives lost, no human lives. I don't know about animals because there's a lot of people that had uh, farm animals, you know, uh, cattle and sheep and stuff that they had to just kind of let go. And, uh, you know, if there's like, you know, domestic dogs. And actually, uh, when this happened, my wife was volunteering at the local uh, Agplex, the agricultural center, where they kind of made a temporary shelter for uh, domestic animals. So they had dogs and cats and rabbits and ferrets and you name it. And they were just there, you know, walking them, feeding them, caring for them. Uh, well, people that were displaced from this fire, uh, you know, kind of sorted themselves out, um, you know, in, in the meantime. So it was just, uh, it was quite a chaotic time. But the one thing I love about Alberta uh, since moving here is you just really get a sense that the people in Alberta care about their communities. And man, when this fire happened, the community here really, really did come together. I'm kind of tearing up thinking about it now, just about how beautiful the people here in the Valley View are and how much they came together. So it was just really, really, uh, you know, being here. And uh, yeah, so this was this, this, uh, the fire started on May 5th. This picture was taken on May 6th. So the day after the fire started, I don't really know what else to say about this photo, but this one I think is my yeah, it's it's hard to say. I I think that cowboy being bucked off the horse, the first photo I showed you is my favorite photo of the year. But uh, this one has deep uh, deep emotional significance to me uh, as well uh, because of of what it represents. And you know, the harrowing time we went after because it was about a week after this, we got a mandatory evacuation order from Valley View. So. Uh, not like I said, we were kind of safe from fire, but the smoke was pretty bad, and that's why they evacuated us was because of the uh, risk of smoke, uh, wildfire smoke inhalation. Now we drove down to White Court, um, which is about two hours, uh, two hours southeast of us, and there were some other fires we drove through on the down there. There was one, uh, a Fox Creek fire, which was like seventy thousand acres or something crazy like that, and for almost the entire drive. Uh, we could see the fire to the left and to the right of us as we drove down uh, down the highway to White Court, where we got uh, where the town actually had vouchers for us and put us up in hotels and gave us meal vouchers and stuff. And they, they really just a credit to the Valley View Town Council and, and White Court and stuff for really kind of coming together and taking care of us. So that was just really cool to see. Um, the funny thing is, uh, we uh, drove down, <laughs> we drove away from Valley View to escape the smoke because that's what the evacuation order was for. So we get down to uh, White Court, we check into the hotel, then we go out for dinner. We go to a Boston pizza there in White Court. And as we're sitting at Boston pizza, uh, waiting for our food to arrive, we just see the smoke start to come in from the fires north of us. And uh, so we were basically engulfed in smoke shortly after being evacuated because we were being engulfed in smoke. So uh, some of you will probably remember a lot of the smoke all over North America. Uh, it was pretty much inescapable. So... Uh, that was just our life for that summer. So we got when we were in the White Court for three or four days, five days, something like this, and um, and then we got the go ahead that it was clear to go back to Valley View. So my family and I were really really eager uh, to get back there. Like there was my wife, myself, my two small children, and my you know seventy pound dog in a hotel room in White Court, and it just wasn't enjoyable. Uh, living out of a suitcase for that long. So we were just happy to get back home to make sure everything was okay. Of course, there was like rumors of people breaking into houses and and uh, and stuff like that, as is the case. Property crime in rural Alberta is, is an issue. And uh, so we were just happy to come back home and see that there was nothing amiss, uh, at least on our property. And uh, when we got back, the sky was just, just this crazy orange-yellow hue. Just, it was just absolutely crazy to see that color in the sky. It looks so apocalyptic. So I took my camera and went out that afternoon when we got back. And I just went around town to take some geary kind of apocalyptic type photos. And that's where this photo comes from. This is actually from the playground of a uh, Catholic school near our home. And I just thought, man, what could be, what? how can I make a kind of creepy ap- apocalyptic image? And it's by showing the contrast of something innocent with something eerie. So what I mean is like in a horror movie, if you imagine 
that there's like this dark, scary room and there's like a children's music box playing or a children's doll. Like immediately that that contrast and the juxtaposition makes it super scary. And I wanted to kind of achieve that here with a uh, playground swing, a children's swing uh, mixed with that kind of orange yellow sky in the background. That was just ominous, as you can see. And uh, while the saturation is is increased a little bit for effect, like this is not like a doctored image. Um, it's a doctored image in one sense. Uh, it's that I had the swing uh, stationary there, and I thought this this would be better if the swing had some motion, if somebody was just sitting on it and jumped off or something. So I pushed the swing, and I took some photos of it. So this is not a pure documentary photo. I did introduce motion to the swing to add some more kind of emotional impact to the photo, and I think I succeeded in that. And out of the few photos I took on that day, uh, this one is my absolute favorite. And a lot of people, when I posted this on X, uh, formerly known as Twitter, uh, on my Facebook and stuff like that, uh, they really, really liked this photo. You can actually go see though any any of these photos that I that I'm showing you today. You can actually go see on my website uh, tjkennedy.me. Uh, this one and the and the rodeo ones and the powwow ones are all in the photojournalism section. So if you want to see all the photos I took at all those events and during this kind of uh, journey uh, through this wildfire, the evacuation, and the return, uh, you can you can go there and you can see all those photos. And I really appreciate you if you do. So uh, yeah, so that was the my two kind of main photos: the start of the wildfires, and then the end of the wildfires for us up here in uh, in Valley View. So uh, one of the things I absolutely love about Alberta is the uh, is the landscapes. We have so much in Alberta. Alberta has it all, and that's why I started a tour company, uh, Prairie View Photo Tours, uh, to bring photographers. Uh, through the different areas of Alberta to show them all the beauty and all the majesty that is Alberta. And um, we have a, uh, a Rockies tour. We have a Badlands tour. We have a Peace Country tour. Peace Country is where I live, where Valley View is. It's just absolutely serene and amazing up here. And uh, we have, of course, an Urban Centers tour where we take you to Edmonton and Calgary. But uh, when I came to college out in Alberta many, many moons ago, it was over two decades ago, um, it was my first time out to Jasper, seeing the mountains, and I absolutely fell in love with them. So uh, when I was creating marketing materials for the tourism company, I went out to the different regions to take photos and videos and stuff to showcase kind of what we can, what this, the scenery you'll have on these tours. And I went out with a friend of mine, Jasper, this one day, and he was actually a new friend. He actually heard this podcast on Spotify and uh, got in touch with me on Facebook and we ended up connecting and going out to Jasper because that's a, he regularly goes out to Jasper to do uh, mountain shots and landscape shots. And uh, his big thing too is taking Aurora shots. And uh, you'll see later on in this episode, uh, some one of the beautiful Aurora shots I was able to capture actually here in Valley View, but they're all over Alberta and they're just absolutely something to behold. If you've never seen the Aurora Borealis slash Northern Lights, uh, you're absolutely missing out. You, you haven't lived. But um, yeah, so we went to the Jas to Jasper that day, and uh, we went up on the gondola up to the Whistler to the top of the mountain. We went uh, to Moline Canyon and Medicine Lake and on kind of all the kind of the hot spots that have some really cool scenery. And my friend Jesse, who I go with, he tells me, "Have you ever been to Pyramid Lake, Pyramid Mountain?" I'm like, "No, I haven't been there." And he's like, "You really should check it out." So I was like, "Okay, well, show me how to get there." So we drove. Um, you know, a few minutes over to Pyramid Lake, my first time there, and I was absolutely floored. And if I remember correctly, this was in like February or March, there was still snow, it was getting really cold, it was still really cold. And uh, this is just over Pyramid Lake. And I love the use of uh, reflection here. There's the symmetry, you kind of get the blue kind of gradient sky reflected in the water. You have the mountains and the trees on the top part of the photo at the center line. You have the ice, sorry, yeah, so the mountains and the trees and then the ice in the mountains on the bottom part of the center line. So because of the ice, you can't get like a pure reflection of just like, you know, tree meets tree in the water there, you know, kind of like that pure, pure reflection. But uh, I do like how the ice kind of adds a, a layer, it kind of looks like a mountain sandwich here. Uh, and then at the bottom, of course, you can see some of the detail in the in the lake of the, the rocks. And, and look how, this is, by the way, 
This is handheld. Um, this is not a long exposure either. This is a handheld standard shot, and that is just how still the water is here, uh, which is absolutely incredible. So uh, amazing, amazing, pristine waters. And uh, as you can see, some of the rocks there in, in the bottom. And uh, wow, what an incredible place that is. And, and actually, this shot is taken, uh, I believe, from a bridge. So if you've ever been to Pyramid Lake, you know, you park kind of in a little parking lot or along the road, and you can walk along this bridge that comes out to an island in the middle of the lake. And it was on this bridge is where I, I took this shot from. And in this one, I tried to add a little bit of kind of orange gold color in the in the water. It was already kind of a bit darker because of the rocks and mud and stuff. And so I tried to add a little bit more of a goldy orange hue to it to be a contrasting slash complementary color to the blue in the sky above. And uh, yeah, so that is that is basically Pyramid Mountain at the end of winter, and uh, just an absolute, absolutely beautiful place. I highly recommend uh, you check out Pyramid Lake and Pyramid Mountain. Now another shot from Jasper is this little guy here. Uh, not so little guy actually. Uh, so this is an elk. If you've never seen one, this nice little uh, crown of like flowers and plants and vegetation that's stuck in his antlers there. And uh, you know, I'm I'm not a wildlife expert. And so uh, it's just really exciting for me to see that Alberta's big game, whether it be bears or elk or moose or uh, or deer or sheep or what have you, and uh, you will you will see them everywhere, <laughs> everywhere in Alberta. Elk are virtually everywhere. And uh, one of the cool things that uh, I didn't even even notice about this uh, until I zoomed in on the face on the by the eye there is they have uh, like I don't know if it's a a, a scent duct. Of some sort but it's just this massive like little duct by its eye that's just super cool to see and uh, this this was actually taken not at the same time when I went to Jasper but this was taken in the summer uh, my stepson lives in Ontario and uh, he flew out to visit us for the summer and we took him to uh, Rock Lake Earth Lodge in Rock Lake Provincial Park and it was just a beautiful amazing time there with the family and we did take a day out to go to Jasper just so we can kind of take him to see the mountains who he'd never seen them before. And I take him to the, you know, just basically repeat the trip I did before where we take him to the top of the mountain on the gondola, you know, as well as with my small children or my wife, they've never, they've seen the mountains before living here, but they've never been on one. So it was really cool to take them there, to take them to Pyramid Lake, to take them to all those scenes and, and sites and, uh, and Million Canyon and all that stuff. And this shot is actually uh, taken, stopped on the road, on the highway, because the elk was crossing the road. So I'm on one side of the elk, and there's other traffic on the other side of the elk. And I just had my wife pass me my camera. And this is shot through the windshield at 200 millimeters using my 70 to 200, uh, capturing this elk as you cross the road. So, um, yeah. So I never thought I'd get a, such a cool shot, like sitting in the driver's seat parked on the highway. But I, here we are. And uh, just an absolutely majestic creature and probably the best shot I've got of uh, any wildlife ever in any province or country whatsoever. So this is probably my one favorite wildlife shot I've ever gotten. And I just happened to get it this past summer uh, in August of uh, 2023. One of the other places I've gone in Alberta, as I mentioned before, for the tour company is the Badlands. And the Badlands is just, oh, I don't know. It's close to Calgary. It's maybe just a Calgary is maybe an hour away, two hours away from hour and a half to two hours away from this site, which is Horse Thief Canyon, which is near Drumheller. And uh, one of the things that's cool about Drumheller is it's an area where there's lots and lots and lots of dinosaur bones and bone beds, and a lot of uh, dinosaurs and stuff have actually been discovered here in Alberta, uh, like actual species of dinosaur uh, or genus. Or again, I said <laughs> I'm no wildlife expert. I'm not really a dinosaur expert either. But there's lots of uh, dinosaurs that were discovered here, and uh, there's just so many bones and stuff. And we talk about Alberta wildlife. One of the things they do have this far south is uh, rattlesnakes uh, in the in the summer, especially. And I have never encountered one yet, and I hope never to. <laughs> uh, snakes and spiders aren't really my thing. Yeah, I didn't didn't encounter any here on this day. And this is just taken at the top of Horse Thief Canyon, looking across the canyon. And there's actually trails and stuff to go all the way down into that canyon that you can bike in there, you can hike in there, you can camp in there, all that kind of stuff. 
But I just love the look of this where you have the on the bottom half of the photo, you have these these like coolies and carved out rock with like the striations in the rock and the different layers. And then juxtaposed with the sky where you have those wispy clouds going all the way across. And it just you could just it looks like you can just look forever and see this canyon go on forever. The real uh, eerie thing about this, uh, you might not, you can't obviously detect it in the shot, but when we were there, I was with there with a couple of buddies, and uh, just the air was completely still. It was so still, and uh, you could hear like a pin drop. And actually, I took some shots of a friend of mine that went down to the bottom of the canyon, uh, and I took some shots to show some scale, and uh, we can talk at just basically a normal volume. Uh, and he can, you can hear perfectly across uh, from up to down. And it was just so insane. So and this is one of the hidden gems of Alberta. If you ever get a chance, it's very accessible too. It's really just, it's literally just off the road. Like I just parked my car, walked to the edge and took this photo. Like it's not, you don't have to like hike like crazy to get to see this and, and to get these shots. Um, just an absolutely beautiful, beautiful place just outside of Drumheller, Alberta called Horseshoe Canyon. And if you're flying in, your airport would be Calgary Airport, and you're going to be about two hours from Calgary Airport uh, to this location. So check it out, Horseshoe Canyon, or Horse Thief Canyon, excuse me. There is also Horseshoe Canyon. The Badlands, I think, is like the, the, the coolest geography that we have to offer in Alberta. I just never get sick of it at all. So as I mentioned, um, up in Valley View in Alberta, and generally we get a lot, especially in northern Alberta here, we get lots of Aurora Borealis and, you know, this the, this year has been absolutely crazy. We're getting them, you know, once a week in a major way. And some of you know that there's been some crazy solar storms coming in our way, and a lot of uh, a lot of these solar storms and uh, a lot of these what do they call them the uh, coronal mass ejections, the CMEs that are hitting Earth. And uh, the benefit of that as a photographer is there's so many northern light shows to go and document. And I spent a lot of time out at the wee hours, two in the morning, three in the morning, uh, in some local fields that are just kind of with little noise pollution. And that's one of the other benefits of being in uh, rural northern Alberta is that there's like no, there's barely any light pollution. And so you can see into the sky crystal clear, even where there's not auroras, like you can see in the image behind me here. Um, that's in, that's actually in the Badlands too. You can kind of see the see the similar kind of rock as we saw in Horseshoe Canyon or Horse Leaf Canyon there. And this is the stars you're going to see on a nightly basis. Like there's literally no noise or light, night, let's try it again. No noise pollution and no light pollution, which is going to affect uh, what you see here. And so when there are auroras, they're crystal, crystal clear, unless there's clouds out. And we do get clouds, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, so this is what you're used to seeing here. And uh, you can see crystal clear uh, Milky Way. Like there's just, if you're an astral photographer, Alberta, Northern Alberta in particular is the place for you for sure. And um, I just get to go out, you know, step out in my backyard, you know, I put the kids to bed, let the dog out to go for a pee, last pee of the night, take a peek up in the sky. And if I see some uh, auroras out there, then I can grab my kit and my camera, my kit, and I can go to my uh, little secret spots here locally and get some shots. Also, I've downloaded on my phone an app that gives me the notifications of when the aurora are here, you know, the percentage of chance of seeing them. And But uh, I don't really like to follow the app too much. It gives you kind of maybe a heads up, but uh, I just like to treat it like the Newfie weather rock. Uh, you know, the weather rock that hangs outside the window. If the rock is wet, it's raining. If the rock is, rock is moving, it's windy. If the rock has snow on it, it's snowing. Uh, same concept, right? I just look into the sky and if I see auroras, well, then there's auroras and I go and take the picture. So um, one of the days I went out, uh, one of the nights I went out, I was uh, all by myself. It was about three in the morning and they, they just exploded over my head and I was just absolutely in awe. Like uh, it was an absolute friggin' spiritual experience, I tell you. And it was just absolutely incredible to have these aurora dancing right over my head and just take up the entire sky so bright. And so I managed to get one of the photos uh, from the time lapse that I, I pulled out, which I think was my favorite photo of the, of the sequence in the time lapse, uh, which is this one here. So you see this image here. Um, at first, there was this, you see that kind of line, that band going up from left to right in a diagonal line. There was just a light band 
just slow moving band moving uh, up there and it gradually intensified, gradually intensified. You see that those vertical, uh, those vertical kind of slashes or lines coming down. And, uh, you know, I've heard before I even saw the Aurora, a lot of people describe them as it looks like, uh, you know, curtains or drapes kind of blow flowing. And uh, it did that absolutely is such a great, a great description for what they look like. It's like these little curtains coming down and kind of waving through the sky. Now, what happened is you see kind of the more yellowy color at the bottom left. Um, there was an aurora from the left of the sky that was moving over to this section of the sky. Because over on the left, like out of frame here, which is across a road in a field, uh, was was where the Big Dipper was. So left of me is north. So this is facing, this is facing like southeast right now. That were the direction we're looking here, and this is about five minutes from my house and uh, maybe 10 minutes at most. And I just parked my car uh, on the road beside a farmer's field and uh, just up into the sky. And again, this is where I go to get my Milky Way shots, my my star shots. Like you can see here that uh, it is crystal clear. Uh, now this is a 30 second long exposure. So some of the stars you'll see, especially if you zoom in are elongated because they move a fair bit in that 30 seconds. But this is a 30 second long exposure and when that little yellow section came from out of frame and connected with this band of light that um, in this photo, the, the aurora just exploded uh, in this massive, massive explosion over my head. It was super crazy. And uh, this is just kind of the just before that massive explosion where you get to see the shape of the auroras. And if you look closely about in the middle of the for the uh, the light the light waves here, the light formation. You'll see it come some kind of bars or some kind of like uh, uh, just looks like planks or like lines that are going out there, and uh, that's not a camera effect. Like that's you look with your eyes, that's what you saw. So it was really cool to see this kind of these like waves and these kind of linear uh, formations in the light as you get this kind of curtain moving across the sky. And I am just absolutely in awe of uh, the Aurora Borealis, and it's such a gift. To be able to to see this up here like like this is crazy in alberta you get beautiful mountains beautiful wildlife crazy friggin um badlands you got these auroras you get massive cultural events that are super cool you get crazy things like this happen but just this amazing amazing uh beautiful scenery in this province and i don't know if you've picked this up yet or not but Alberta is absolutely huge. The skies are huge. The, uh, you know, the animals are huge. Everything is absolutely uh, bigger in Alberta. And the sun and the moon, my God, the sun and the moon are no exception here. I have never seen a more beautiful sunset than I have in peace country in Northern Alberta. And this sunset here um, is actually over top of the town I live in now, which is Valley View. So I am actually standing here on uh, by a radio tower overlooking the town and if you look on the left side of the photo all the way down there's the highway that goes so i'm not actually on the highway although in the photo it looks like i'm standing on that same road uh, this road curves to the left and then uh, the highway comes in from the left up to uh, to go straight ahead as you see there and uh, just to the left of the sun and uh, that's highway 43 that's going west to grand prairie so if you go to the right of this photo that's north and uh, that's just the setting sun. And I just looked up in the sky this night and I just saw how huge the sun was. And uh, I'm like, I, I got I to gotta go get a picture of this. So I'm like, where's the best spot to get this sun? And it was, ra it was a race against time, man, because I only had maybe about 10 minutes before the sun was gone. And so I had to boot it, uh, you know, grab my kit and take my car and just bolt up to the, you know, Sorry, you say, sorry, mom. Uh, say sorry to my wife and my kids. I gotta, you know, basically skip dinner to go and get this shot. Um, and and by the way, just as an aside, you can see some snow on the ground here. So this may have been about six or seven o'clock. But in the summer, in the summer, the sun that in Al in northern Alberta never really goes down. Like it just kind of dips below the horizon at maybe midnight, and then by three, four in the morning, at like four in the morning, probably just starts to maybe five. I'm exaggerating here. Maybe four or five it kind of comes back up on the other side of the horizon. So um, you always have the sun's light in the sky in the summer. So if you do move here, you definitely need blackout drapes. <laughs> we learned that. 
but you get the longest, longest days in northern Alberta in the summer. This one, this is probably about six, seven o'clock. And uh, the sun, when it goes down uh, in the winter, it goes down quick. And so I knew I had limited time. So I raced up to the top of this hill. I thought this would be the best spot to get the sun on that horizon. And uh, I got it just as it touched that horizon. And uh, you might not, the, the picture itself might not do it justice, but if you can kind of compare the sun to the size of the highway on the left there and the size of the houses and structures you can kind of see in uh, the closer part of the frame, it was absolutely massive. And I love just the color in the sky there that, that you have there, the, the golden, the pinks and the blues and all the things you see in the sky there. It's just um, a massive and beautiful Alberta sky. And, uh, you know, last summer, you know, we're in the summer of 2022 driving across Alberta, uh, just everywhere you go, just the sunset and the sky is a gift every single day. It's absolutely, absolutely beautiful. And uh, we just absolutely love it here in Valley View. And uh, that's why I decided to finish off uh, with this photo here, um, showing just the beautiful, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this photo just encapsulates exactly why I fell in love with this place. You know, coming from the busiest city in Canada, Toronto, to where the, a town where the closest traffic light is 125 kilometers away. Like, I, I, I kid you not, the closest traffic light to me is 125 kilometers away in Grand Prairie. We have some stop signs. We have some crosswalks here. They're going to even be building a roundabout on the highway, but there is no stoplights, and that is just absolutely amazing. And there's no high-rise structures. We're in a town of less than, uh, fewer than 2,000 people, and it's just an absolute, absolute dream to be here. Uh, the community is absolutely wonderful. So, uh, man, Alberta is just a beautiful place. So there you have it. There's my top photos of 2023 or my favorite photos that I've taken. Uh, I'd love to see yours too. Please do submit them. Put them in the comments below or put links to them where I can go see them. I'd love to see your work as well. Don't forget in 2024 to get your camera, to go out, do lots of shooting. Whether you have a DSLR or mirrorless or whether you just have your cell phone, uh, the equipment doesn't matter. Just go out and take lots of beautiful photos. I really want to see those photos in 2024. Appreciate you guys and we'll see you next year. Bye.